Hello everyone, my name is Roger and the uh, point of this little video is to uh, do an outline on how to set up the CPAM S80 relay. Uh, we don't certainly need to get into a relay brand debate. There's multi-LIN and there is uh, Siemens and ABB and so on and so on. We're not going to get into the Chevy versus Ford debate on which one is best. We're just going to talk about the CPAM relays. Uh, there are several types. There's the S series, which is for which what's what we're going to deal with here, which is for the substation incomer and feeders. In this case, it's going to be for a feeder. Uh, there's a T series for transformer protection, the G series for generator, B series for bus bar, also used with mains, and we'll get into that in a future video. And then uh, C for capacitor protection. Obviously, one of the first things you'll need to do this is the SFT2841 software. Uh, you can download that from Schneider Electric's site. And I need to also pass on the advice to keep up with current versions. Uh, a lot of times an older version will not work with the firmware of a newer relay. And the downloads are free and the registration is free, so keep, it up, keep up with the current stuff. Uh, what you're going to need to get started, obviously you're going to need some drawings. You need to know how the thing is wired um, frequently an engineer or a designer will add another input that you would not normally use. You need to be aware of that so get a, a good copy of the installation drawings and be sure to look at the trip and close circuits as well as any type of monitoring circuits and if you can get a hold of the sheet where the actually shows the connections to the relay I.O. that's a good thing to have. You'll also need to know what is connected on the relay Obviously you'll have a CT module and you'll have at least one I.O. module. Uh, probably an MEH120 is the most common for 120 volt DC control circuits. Uh, you'll need to know if you have one, two, or three cards. you need to see if you have Ethernet connection or if you're going to use RS-485. Uh, most common is Ethernet using the ACE850 TP module, which we will also cover in another video. Uh, you'll need the IP address if you're using one of those. If you're going with the RS-485, you'll need to know the assigned address for this device that you're going to be working on. You'll also need engineered and modeled settings for your relay. Uh, uh, you can't stress enough caution here. Don't use the settings I'm using. Use the settings that are correctly engineered for the load, for the breaker, and PTW modeled. You'll also need to make sure you have proper coordination so that you don't have a feeder breaker tripping, or I should say not tripping, and the main trips on a ground fault when it should have just been the feeder. Coordination is very important. So make sure you get properly engineered setting files for your installation. Uh, there's advantages of pre-creating the file. That is, you can sit at your desk and hopefully not get bothered by too many things. You're not out in the field. You don't have people looking over your shoulder. You're not uh, subjected to a bunch of ambient noise and manufacturing and so on going on around you. Uh, when you do get on site, you can just connect your laptop to the relay, upload your settings, and boom, you're good to go. This way you can also back, go back and double check and take your time on how this is set up. That's the main advantage of this. Now once again, this demonstration is for creating a settings file for a feeder breaker. In this instance, it's a 13,800 volt distribution substation and this feeder will be protected by a CPAM S80 relay. This is a demonstration only. Once again, do not use these settings on your installation. And I should also add that not all of the ANSI protection settings are used in this instance. This is a setup just for this unique feeder breaker. Each feeder breaker is different. Each installation and load is unique. There's no universal settings file. You're going to need to make one for each relay. It's a good idea to keep uh, files, of course, on what you have done so that you can refer to them in the future. Uh, also, I will add that once you upload your settings to the relay, do a as-left download and keep that file so that if something should ever happen to the relay or the base unit gets replaced or gets hit by lightning or who knows what, if you need to go back and set this relay up again, boom, you've already got the settings, you can load it right back in, you're back up in business. Uh, in future videos we'll get into the modular structure of the CPAM relays, how easy it is to replace a, a component that got blown up or hit with a forklift or whatever, because all kinds of things happen. 
I've dealt with hundreds of these. I have never actually seen a base unit fail on its own. It's always been either lightning or air and fork trucks or somebody got too wild in construction with a piece of pipe and bashed the front of it. But it's uh, easy to change out, but it's important that you keep your setting files and keep a record of them. And that's probably enough of this talking head stuff, so we'll get started on the setup. Okay, here's where we're going to do a little bit of setup on this S80 relay. The first thing you'll need to do is get your software opened up. And you want to click on New File right here. And we're doing an S80. Select that. Expand this so we can see things better. Start right here on the hardware setup. Uh, this right here is your CT module. You have to have that. Uh, we have one MES120H module on here, and we're going to have Ethernet via an 850 module. You can go in here to set up the IP address. Followed by your subnet. And if your particular facility requires a gateway or your IT people do, this is where you would put it in. Uh, it kind of depends on how your uh, network is set up and whether you have individual VLANs that need to be kept track of. You need to check with your IT people. In this case, we have one. Once you have everything in there, just click OK, Apply. Of course, you want to continue. Uh, we don't have an analog output module here or a sync check. This is just strictly a feeder breaker. Our uh, UMI is the mimic based in this case. Apply. And this is feeder 8x6. You need to give that CPAM a label. And we get into general characteristics. Uh, this is a 60 hertz system. We're doing ANSI. Want temperature in Fahrenheit in this case. And we are US English. And apply. Next are our CT VT sensors. This is where you put in your value for the CTs. Look at my sheet here and see what they are. There it is. Make sure you have your all your engineered settings and your drawings and everything with you before you start this, and try to have them in somewhat of an order. Okay, our PTs is 8.4 kV. Secondary is 120 volts. Like that. There's one other thing I should mention here. Um, up here on your options, you want to go to your setting mode. Uh, in this case, we're using TMS. It's what most of North America uses. If it's not there, you need to apply it here. And you will need to enter it on the relay because this will not carry when you load your settings up, I found this out. It's one of the little uh, Schneider idiosyncrasies you'll find. And if you end up loading your TMS settings and your relay is still set up for 10IS, your protection curves are going to be off. CTVT supervision. Looking here to see what they want on this one here. What's on? Time delay of one second. And they want no action. VT on. For a partial loss of voltage and a complete loss of voltage. And this seems high, but they're asking for 10 seconds. I 
do not always question why when I'm given engineered settings. And here they want no action. Apply. Control logic, we're not using any here other than the uh, predefined for switchgear control, which is by default. There's no ZSI here or, or that zone selective interlocking, and we're not doing automatic transfer. This, like I said, this is a feeder breaker. Your logic IOs, we'll be using output one, which is your trip. And they're using output four here in order to uh, light up a pilot light. And for input 103 is going to be breaker racked in. What I set this to though is other use. And the reason for that is I know this is going to be used in power monitoring expert software. And if you put in breaker racked out, you'll end up with a negative function on it. We're also using I-107 as a close command. And I'm not real sure why we're doing that, but it's called for here. Uh, we're not using any of the other outputs here on the uh, MEH120H card. So here we'll hit apply. I'm going to have to look into why they're using 107 for close command because there's nothing in the logic for it. Uh, your next step would be goose. We're not doing anything with goose here. Your next step would go up here to this little icon for your protection settings. It'll open up to the default page to show you what settings, protection settings are available for this particular model relay. And from here we can go and set up what's called for. Start with 5051, which is your time over current being 51 and your instantaneous is 50. We're going to be a unit 1 and unit 2 on to latch and trip the circuit breaker. The setting for phase over current for 1, we're asking for right, triple E very inverse at 450 amps. highlighted. Don't forget to change this one here if you're going from amps to kilo, kilo amps or backwards with a delay of 1.08 seconds. Two, which is their instantaneous definite time at 2.82 ka. or 60 milliseconds and apply. We're not using any other settings on the 5051 so next we'll move to the 50, 51, 50N, 51N which is your ground fault. Okay here we have our 50N, 51N ground fault pickup both time over current and instantaneous settings here is for number one which is our time over current IEEE extremely inverse 420 amps with a delay of two seconds instantaneous pickup is 2820 amps at 60 milliseconds make sure you are latched up here or I should say make sure you have both of these checked on that they will latch and trip the circuit breaker so you have all your settings in there hit apply and our last protection setting on this particular relay is for 46, which is your negative sequence current and unbalance. We're using unit 1. I want to turn that on to latch and trip the circuit breaker. And I should mention from past experience, in some cases when you get a low load on a breaker, for instance during a factory shutdown, the load can become unbalanced and you may get false trips. If that's the case, you'll need to do a load study and adjust the threshold percentage up or down as needed. Uh, those nuisance trips can be a, a real nuisance. Okay, our tripping curve here is IEEE very inverse. With a threshold of 13%. The delay of 1.8 seconds. Did you have that in? Hit apply. Good to go there.
Next checkbox over here is for Logipam. We're not using any of that in this case. Uh, we'll cover that in a different video using the SFT2885 software. Very powerful program. There's a lot of things you can do with this. So here's for in entering internal logic equations. I've only done this twice ever because I don't like it. I think it's uh, a little backwards. I'd rather use the SFT2885 and do it in Logipam. Um, like here, once again, your mileage may vary. Here we have the matrix. This is where you can assign things. Um, what we want to have is, I know output 3 is a pilot light for a trip. So we need to set our protection settings to output 3. Apply that. Our logic. We need to change the closing from output 3 to output 4. That's going to be the pilot light. It, I didn't design this one, I'm just following drawings. You can also assign outputs for other things here. If you scroll through, you can look at what else can be done. Uh, there are also, oh, yep, need to apply that. Your inputs, you can assign them to do different things. Uh, to different outputs if you have them enabled. Uh, we'll cover that in another video. Fault recording. We usually leave this by default. It'll pick everything. It'll pick up all your protection settings. So from there, I usually go back to the main hardware page here. I'm going to do a file. Save as. This is AX6 feeder. Save that, and there is your setting file, which you can then take out into the field, which I'll be doing here, and load it, and we'll see how things go. Okay, here we are on site, and uh, settings are loaded, and obviously we have success here. Uh, forgive the poor video quality, it's hard to do some of this stuff on site. And I'm having to use the front face of an iPhone, so not the best uh, thing to use for a video camera. Uh, we're connected onto the front of the CPAM right there to the port. And over here on the other side is where I have my laptop sitting in here in this little compartment. Everything loaded up and went well, so on to the next project.